To thee we come, O Lord our God. in this holy sacrifice. And now please make an examination of your conscience. And now let us all recite the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God for your penance for the next three nights, besides saying your evening prayers of our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory Be, to go out of your way and to do three acts of kindness to someone in your family, to a friend, or to a neighbor. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord, Jesus Christ, absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And you. Show us your mercy, Lord. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, you nourish your people with food of angels and furnish them bread from heaven ready to hand, untoiled for endowed with all delights in conforming to every taste. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace is the honor. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, 
Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, in this wondrous sacrament you left as a memorial of the passion and death of your Son, Jesus. May we, who so reverence his body and blood, perceive within ourselves the effects of his redemption. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Cheryl, if you would proclaim the word. The first reading is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now, the Lord, your God, has directed all your journey, journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then you fed with your manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its syrup, serpents, and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The gradual. Lord, they all look to you to give them food in due time. When you give it to them, they gather. When you hold your hands, they are filled with good things. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of Paul, the apostle, to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we though many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. 
and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have bread because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. Today is the solemnity of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi being taken from the Latin, the body of Christ. A simple piece of bread, unleavened, made of flour and water. A very simple gift that our Lord and Savior gave to us, but such an important gift. 2,000 years ago, he gathered with his apostles in an upper room, and they celebrated the Passover. If any one of you have ever had the opportunity of sharing the, the Seder, the Jewish Passover, you know that two of the key ingredients, bread and wine. But Jesus was to transform this meal of the Passover. Does anybody know where we get the word Passover? Where it is found in Holy Scripture? I hope you do. Anybody who has ever seen Charlton Heston as Moses realizes that while the Jewish people were in bondage in Egypt, Moses as God's spokesman, and mostly Aaron spoke because Moses had, he stuttered, and so he did not feel he was an adequate, adequate speaker. Well, after all the plagues that were sent by God to the Egyptians, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And every time that Moses said, let my people go, the Pharaoh had a way of making life tougher for the children of God. Well, <clears throat> according to scripture, 
the final act of God was turned around on the Pharaoh because the Pharaoh said, I'm going to put to death the firstborn of all the Hebrews. And what did God do? He said to Moses, what's going to happen is that the first of all the Egyptians, the firstborn will die. And what you need to do is to take the blood of the lamb and put it over your doorpost. And the angel of the Lord will pass over your homes. Well, as the story goes, with the Pharaoh losing his son and the wailing that took place in Egypt, Pharaoh finally said to Moses, go, take your people. And so that is where we get the word Passover. It's interesting that in the Judeo-Christian tradition, the Passover is associated with the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, associated with Easter. And at the Last Supper, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, our Lord and Savior shared with his apostles, but he was to give new definition to this Passover meal. It was not only the bread that reminded the Egyptians of the 40 years that they struggled through the wilderness. We read about it in today's first reading. God provided for the Hebrews, the children of God, by sending them manna at the Last Supper. Jesus was again to give new definition of the bread. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu. Blessed be the Lord of God. The first blessing is for bread. In our tradition, whenever we celebrate Holy Mass, we remember that Last Supper. We remember the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And most impo importantly, we remember the words that he spoke to us that we found and find in Holy Scripture that he spoke to his apostles that evening. He took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it. And he said, all of you take and eat, for this is my body. And the wine that was in the cup of Elijah he transformed it and he said, all of you take and drink of this, for this is my blood. We share with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we all have bodies, just as he did. The word became flesh. We all have blood. Having served as a paramedic in New York, I saw people that died because they lost too much blood. Blood is a life force. To the Jews, there are special rabbinical teachings of how to prepare meat. It has to be drained of blood. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as partakers of the one bread, Jesus intends to meet with us at his table in which we recall the breaking of the bread and the significance. Now, there are different interpretations. The Roman Catholics, they use the word transubstantiation. There is a change that takes place. Those of you who have been able to read the bulletin, those of you who will read the bulletin, I did research on the early church fathers. And one of the things that the early church fathers did, whether it was St. Augustine or St. Ambrose or Jerome or a cadre, I was telling Wayne that if I was to put out the bulletin, the bulletin would probably be, instead of 10 or 12 pages long would probably be about 20 pages. 
And each and every single one of the early church fathers said that at the words of Jesus, it is no longer just bread. And it is no longer just wine. But all of the early church fathers who were the disciples of the apostles and of St. Paul came to understand that Christ, the real presence, as I said, the Roman Catholics call it transubstantiation. The Lutherans and the Anglicans call it co-substantiation. I happened to see the other day a segment on YouTube, and I love YouTube because you can find just about anything, of a discussion by a Lutheran who was trying to understand the change that takes place intellectually. You can't do it. You know what the Polish National Catholic Church calls, what the Roman Catholics call transubstantiation, and many of the Anglicans and the Lutherans call co-substantiation. Our church makes it very simple. It is called a mystery. There is no way that you can understand the change that takes place. There are some, mostly in the Protestant churches, that consider the Holy Eucharist as a symbol, as a remembrance, as an ordinance, but for us it is a sacrament. And we, Polish National Catholics, live a sacramental life from baptism to the anointing, from Holy Communion, penance, confirmation, marriage, holy orders. We live a sacramental life and everything is centered around the importance of a gift, a simple gift that Jesus was to give for all time and, and only once when, when you thought Stop to think about it. It was a perfect sacrifice because he offered himself for us. And we find him in the breaking of bread. As we consecrate the bread and the wine on the altar to the glory of God. Glory to God in the highest. This is why we come. And we are beckoned by our Lord to partake whatever Holy Mass is offered to receive his body and blood through the forms of bread and wine. And so on this, the solemnity of Corpus Christi in the octave, may we always keep in mind the simple gift that our Lord and Savior gives to us in which we when we gather to receive the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus comes and meets with us in a most spiritual way. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. Believe and walk on God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. Powerful and ever-living God, 
We do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. At the Last Supper, he sat at table with his apostles and offered himself to you as the spotless lamb, the acceptable gift that gives you perfect praise. Christ has given us this memorial of his passion to bring it bring us its saving power until the end of time. When we receive the bread of heaven, we are nourished and strengthened by our Lord to live in holiness and righteousness. We come then to your table to be fed this wonderful sacrament and to grow in the likeness of the risen Christ. And so therefore we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our Prime Bishop, and Paul, our Bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. As we gather, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, <laughs> first responders, and all health care workers. In our prayers today, may we pray for peace in our world. May we also pray humbly for all abused and neglected children, all those people who suffer violence. May we also pray for all abused and neglected animals. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of those who serve in our armed forces to keep our country in freedom. And Father, may we all present our faith to you in our devotion, which are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom, May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless to accept and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being 
he again lives among his people. At that small moment, for so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. <coughs> In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice of the Immaculate Host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not wearing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and then following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
please be seated. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ Help us who receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you. Who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not because for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Receive the body of the Lord Christ.
This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the sacrament of the altar, the pledge of your love for us, move us to long for eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and art one God forever and ever. Sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of my, our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe. But only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light, the real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 